A new research has shown that many young girls underestimate their own abilities because of their gender. The studies show that by the age of six, many girls stop associating words like brilliance with their own sex, whereas boys continue to believe they are clever. Older girls also became less interested in games meant for really, really smart children. So, why is it that young girls have such little belief in their own gender? Joining me from our central London studio to discuss this are Radhika Sangani, who is a writer for The Daily Telegraph, and Peter Lloyd, who is the author of Stand By Your Manhood, a game changer for modern men. A very good afternoon to you both. Radhika, if I could firstly start to you, I'd like to paint a picture for you. Say I've got a friend who's got twins, a boy and a girl, both of them are five years of age. If he says to his son, you're a clever boy, you're a strong boy, I'm going to get you a little truck so you can play with, but to his daughter, he says, you're a pretty girl, let me get you this pink dress, I'm going to get you a doll. Is that fundamentally the problem here, the different perceptions, the different ways that boys and girls are treated from such a young age? I think that's definitely one of the problems. I think also the scenario you've just depicted is actually really common. It's probably something I experienced myself when I was about five or six. And it's one I continue to see today. I think the problem is, it's just, you know, there's so many things. It is the way parents talk to children. You know, as you said, that the boy's told to be strong, clever. And I even sometimes have to control myself when I'm praising my young nieces to not tell them they're pretty. I just think it's become so ingrained in us that it's become a natural thing to do. But it's also, you know, things they see just externally, whether it's toys or media and the fact that, you know, girls are given dolls. We've seen lots of instances of gendered clothing and toys, you know, in toy stores, the pink aisle and the blue aisle. I think all of these things combined do kind of give children the idea that they've got certain roles and positions to fill in life. Uh, Pete Lloyd, um, do you think we're reading a bit too much into this? Is it, is it way too early to, to make these distinctions between uh, boys and girls? I mean, surely we should wait till later life, shouldn't we? Yeah, this study is, is, is laughably bad. It's not robust in the slightest. I mean, it is literally a case of feelings over fact. Uh, you know, girls outperform boys in virtually every academic domain. So whatever they feel aged six is irrelevant because it doesn't hold them back. Instead, this study and others like it should be focusing on the huge education gap which sees boys, particularly white working class boys, the worst performing demographic in schools. But of course it doesn't because the author behind it is an ardent feminist who went out to try and prove a foregone conclusion. This is ridiculous. We shouldn't even be talking about it. Uh, Radhika, see you smiling, see you shaking your head? Yeah, I completely disagree with Peter. Um, firstly, I do, you know, I, I completely accept that girls do tend to go on and do better academically at secondary school and university. But then when they enter the workplace, that's when you see the problem. You see a massive gender pay gap. You see girls not that's going not into true. STEM careers, so true. science, technology and maths. Fake news. And sh sure, they're no, sure, they're doing well um, academically. But I think what, what this whole gender stereotypes thing does is it creates a lack of confidence. And it makes girls feel on some level that even though they're academically you know, capable of doing everything a boy is, that they've got different paths to follow. And, you know, H6. it's something I've seen in personal experience, and there's studies to prove it as well. Uh, Peter, as Radhika was saying, I mean, in later life, you do see that there is a lack of women in professions uh, such as engineering, in uh, mathematics. So can we draw a direct line between young children, the way they are treated at such an early age, and the fact that we do have a, a lack of women in professions such as the ones I've just mentioned? No, this is the same old lazy left rhetoric that we hear all the time. Look, statistical disparities don't necessarily mean that there is discrimination at play. There are elemental differences between the genders and women and men like to make different choices as a whole. Not all, some, but you cannot say that there is discrimination at play. Look at women in other sciences, and you know, such as biology and veterinary science. They dominate these areas. They also dominate medicine. So to say that they're being repressed from the age of six is absolutely bonkers. And, and if, if we're saying that there is a problem and, and it happens in primary schools, well, the majority of primary school teachers are female. So this is something that clearly female teachers are doing to pupils. So it's got nothing to do with men and this mythical patriarchy myth. Uh, Radicus, w w what is happening between the ages of five and six? Because up until then, the study found that there was, there, there, there was no difference in the outlook, in, the, in perception. Boys and girls essentially thought the same things in terms of what was clever, what was deemed as brilliance, what, how you could associate that to whichever gender. didn't really matter. So what happens between those ages, between five and six, that the gap does exist? 
I think it's probably just as they get older and they're exposed to more media, more influences. You know, maybe it's the different kinds of television shows they're watching. Maybe they're seeing more music videos. You know, like if you turn on a music channel, you do still see that same thing of like the scantily clad girls surrounding the guy. You do still see these images, and I just think that it's that difference and the fact that that's what they're seeing. And you know, I know Peter doesn't think this is an issue, but at the same time, you can't ignore the statistics that show that children, this actually children, are being given, um, there's a gender pay gap in pocket money. There was a study that showed this really recently. Oh, for goodness and sake, this is ridiculous. I just think, but I mean, it's true that this is what's happening. And it's not I, true. You know, what, I think it's just a really subconscious stoking. thing that parents and teachers are doing. And Peter said it could be female teachers. Sure, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't think anyone's saying that men are the problem in perpetuating these stereotypes. They can affect men as well. I think society as a whole um, is creating this problem. Look, Radhika, with all due respect, you believe that air conditioning is sexist, so I'm not surprised that you think there is some huge conspiracy against six-year-old girls. There isn't. All of the empirical data shows that girls are outperforming boys in every academic domain. Young female graduates dominate universities. Women in the workplace are out-earning their young male counterparts. I am sorry, but if there is a patriarchy, it's absolutely rubbish and ineffective. Radhika? Um, in no way is this a conspiracy. I don't have some sort of bizarre personal agenda. All I want, and I think most of us out there want, is equality. And it is undeniable well, 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 that there are still there is still a gender pay gap in the workplace. You know, women true. sure may be doing very well in some professions, but not all of them. There is still a problem with the lack of women in STEM. We've seen this week with the report about pregnancy and discrimination and you know the, the discrimination that new mothers face in the right, workplace. Okay. Can I, all can, of these things are very real. Can I just I mean, Peter, there. if you do hear from a, 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 a lot of colleagues, a lot of friends, female friends and, and colleagues, they will say to you that there is a gender pay gap. It does exist and it's not something that you should turn your back on. It's, it's very there. It's very prominent in our society. And, the, and the, <laughs> will the majority of people not say that is something that seriously needs to be addressed? Look, any economist worth their salt does not agree with the wage gap. Many female economists agree with me, many of them feminists. If anybody looks at the data, the wage gap does not exist. It is one of the biggest lies perpetuated by, by feminists to ensure that the very lucrative movement does not go out of business. And I'd like to ask Radhika a question. If, if, if she and her fellow feminists are so interested in equality, why is this study focusing on, on what girls think? Why is it not focusing on the huge education gap or the fact that boys are put on Ritalin because they're held up to the gold standard of female behaviour? Why is nobody addressing that? Radhika, you're mean, bursting to say something. to say something. I'm not responsible for commissioning this study. I think, or, I think as well, what I've been trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is that feminism is about equality. And what it's this not. study is showing is that there is a lack of equality for children and these gender stereotypes do go on to affect both boys and girls in damaging ways. Like, I completely understand that there are lots of problems that affect boys. You know, there is that educational gap which, that affects white working class doing nothing boys. About, of course. And okay. I, what, the idea of feminism is to promote equality. And I think the goal very much is, is that if boys and girls are treated equally at such a young age, those changes will go on um, to follow them throughout their lives and hopefully lead to a better outcome for everybody. It is a debate that's going to no. rumble on for some time uh, to come. Sorry, we're out of time, I'm afraid, but many thanks indeed uh, to you both for joining us. Thanks.